So today, this could be the most important video that I ever do, and it's called How to Choose Your Steak Butcher. I remember when I was trying to find the steak butcher that I could rely on to make sure that I could at least start with a great steak even if you know years ago I wasn't sure exactly how to get the best out of a great steak but this video will give you the four or five tips that you're going to need in order to make sure you find a butcher that gives you great steak so at least you can start with that. Okay, so the first thing you've got to check when looking for the perfect butcher is check, check that the beef in there has come from what's called the suckle method farm. What that means is that the calf, when the calf is born, it stays with the mother, drinks the mother's milk, and then usually goes on out to pasture and, and eats grazes and eats, so it eats grass. That's a very natural process for, for the animal. Uh, in America, this is called the cow to calf method. What unfortunately does happen with cheaper meats, cheaper beef, is that the calf is not allowed to stay with the mother at all, and in fact, as soon as, more or less as soon as it's born, it's removed, taken away, and then artificially fed in growth pens. Okay, and the next important thing to check is have a look at the steaks in the counter. Are they sitting there with a, a nice yellowy, creamy coloured, thickish fat layer around, for example, on the sirloin or down the outside edge, or a T-bone on the, on the sirloin side, or, and have the ribeyes got a nice chunky bit of buttery looking fat in the middle. Generally what you're looking for is steaks that have got this creamy, wonderful coloured buttery fat, but also have this fat starts to sort of permeate into the meat of the beef. Okay, so the next key thing is uh, either the butcher will have a dry aging room um, or he'll have a dry aging cabinet and you'll see it. Um, if it's in the butchers, it'll usually look like a kind of big stainless steel structure with glass and inside you'll see big joints of beef aging inside there. These are wonderful bits of the kit and what they'll do is make sure that air circulates around the, the joints, the, the big beef pieces, uh, such that the mold will form and the flavor will develop. Another big indicator that this is a butcher that you should stick with is are they excited about steak? Are they excited about the treatment and maturing phases of their steaks? And when you ask them, can you, for example, can you, could you hang me a piece of uh, a, tea, a section of T-bones? If they look excited and willing to do it, um, they might have to charge you more, fine. But if they look excited and interested, interested, then that's a great sign that you're talking to a butcher that loves what they do. So if all of those uh, questions you've asked come up trumps and uh, you get a tick next to each one, I would recommend strongly asking the butcher first of all to start your relationship with them is take a chunk of T-bone, so that's your sirloin and your fillet all in one chunk big enough for maybe six to eight uh, T-bones to be cut from it. Ask your butcher to hang that in the dry age for you for let's just say another three and a half weeks from the point at which you're seeing it. Um, I know it sounds expensive and it sounds you know like a big thing to commit to but once those steaks are cut for you you can have you can freeze them you have them uh, vacuum packed freeze them and you really won't be able to tell. Even ask the butcher to put your name on it that's what I do. Here's a couple of uh, steaks from my butchers who I've known for many years and what they look for are all the things that I uh, mentioned in this video. You can see the nice thick line of fat along the outside edge. There's fat on board inside the meat also. Uh, one is a porterhouse, which I mentioned you'll get that gristle there, but in exchange for that, you get a nice big fillet, fillet and a nice big sirloin. On the T-bone, smaller fillet and a smaller sirloin, but you don't get that gristle. It's, it's entirely up to you. Both steaks are awesome. Also notice, uh, the slight discoloration in the meat. These, so these are aged. 
both of these are aged. Um, and I've also uh, let them age a little bit in my own fridge. Uh, just leave them at the bottom of your fridge with, uh, on a plate and they'll, they'll age a little bit further. Um, but these were done for me by my butcher for probably three and a half weeks after they were, came from the slaughterhouse where they'll have been hung for a couple of weeks as well. The last thing you want is bright red meat with no fat in it uh, and no fat around it. So a quick review. Suckler method or cow to calf. Milk fed, grass fed, dry aged, lots of fat and a butcher that loves to talk about steaks. That's what you need.